Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten maidens who were told to take their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's called the parable of the wise and the foolish maidens. But it could just as easily be called the Boy Scout parable. That's because when you come right down to it, The parable is telling you that you should always be prepared. The parable doesn't want you to be a procrastinator. The parable doesn't want you to follow the advice that Mark Twain gave many years ago. Mark Twain once said, you should never put off until tomorrow what you can put off until the day after tomorrow. That's not the way the parable wants you to live your life. The parable wants you to be more like the man who believed in getting things done. That's the message that he preached to his children. And it eventually paid off. You could see it every time the family went camping. Now, I know we have families that enjoy going camping, so you know how it works. Well, when this family got to the campground, the same thing always happened. Instead of running off to play and explore the woods, the children immediately sprang into action. They got right to work. They set up the camp, the tent. Then the boys ran off to gather firewood while the girls worked feverishly with their mother to set the stove up and get it ready to use On one occasion, a nearby camper was impressed with their precision teamwork. So he waved to the father and complimented him. That's quite a system you have there, he said. They sure do work well together. What's your secret? The father just smiled and said, It's really not all that complicated. We just drive for seven hours without stopping. And then when we get to the campground, I tell them, no one gets to use the bathroom until the camp is set up. (laughs) And it works every time. That's what the maidens in the parable needed to do. The challenge was to get ready for the arrival of the bridegroom. The challenge was to be prepared. Now, in order to really understand the parable, you have to understand how weddings were celebrated back then. Today, when a couple decide to get married, they pick a time and a day. Then they send out formal invitations. Back then, there were no formal invitations. And besides uh, that, a wedding was a community event. Everyone came together to feast and enjoy the festivities. And the celebration often lasted for several days. Then, at some point, the bridegroom would show up and 
he would say that he had come to take his bride's hand in marriage. However, you never knew when that was going to take place. It could happen in the middle of the day or it could happen in the middle of the night. That's why you had to be ready. It's why you had to be prepared. It's the reason why the wise maidens took the time before the celebrations began to go to the market and get the oil they needed for the lamps. It's the reason why they sat down to trim the wicks on their lamps and make sure that they were in good working order. The foolish maidens didn't do that. So when the bridegroom arrived in the middle of the night, they were completely unprepared. They had to go off and find some oil for their lamps. By the time they got back, the doors to the banquet hall were closed, and they were left out in the cold unable to enjoy that grace-filled moment. Now when you read the parable, you get the feeling that the reason why the foolish maidens weren't prepared is because they were too busy laughing and living it up. They were too busy gabbing and gossiping and enjoying the celebration. Yes, you could call this the Boy Scout parable. In the parable, Jesus is telling you to always be prepared. And that raises an obvious question. Prepared for what? The answer to the question is simple. In the parable, Jesus is telling you to be prepared for that moment when he comes back. We call it the second coming. Just as Jesus came to dwell among us in Bethlehem, full of grace and truth, the Christian faith proclaims that he's going to come back a second time. And when he does... It will be to judge the living and the dead and usher in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. That's what the disciples were told when they watched Jesus ascend to heaven 40 days after he was raised from the dead. In the book of Acts, we're told that as the disciples were standing there watching Jesus ascend into heaven, two men in dazzling white robes suddenly appeared to them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. So Jesus is coming back. But like the maidens in the parable, we don't know when it's going to happen. It can happen tomorrow. It can happen a year from tomorrow. It can happen a thousand years from tomorrow. But, and here's the important question, if it did happen tomorrow, would you be ready? Would you be prepared In the parable, the wise maidens made sure they were prepared by sitting down and getting the wicks on their lamps ready and going out and getting the oil that they needed for their lamps. For you and me, the way to be prepared is by making sure that you're living your life faithfully now. The way to be prepared is making sure that you're doing what God wants you to do now. You see, the parable doesn't want you to wait to do something nice for someone. The parable doesn't want you to wait to make amends for something you shouldn't have done. The parable doesn't want you to wait to let someone know that you appreciate that person. That's a mistake that Bud Grant made many years ago when he was a football coach for the Minnesota Vikings. You remember Bud Grant? One day, he called a play that was a little unusual. It was unusual because the play required uh, Fran Tarkenton, the quarterback, to block a tackle on the opposing team. Now, if you know anything about football, you know that quarterbacks don't block tackles because it puts them at risk of getting injured. However, the Vikings were losing the game, and Grant knew that they had to do something unusual to turn the momentum of the game around. So he called the play. Tarkenton made the block, and the Vikings scored a touchdown. The next day, the team gathered to watch video of the game. When the play in question flashed across the screen, 
Grant complimented several of the players on the little things that they did that made the play work. But he didn't say anything about Tarkenton's block. So after the meeting was over, Tarkenton went up to Grant and asked him a question. Coach, he said, did you see the block that I made? Sure, Grant said, I saw it, it was great. Tarkenton then asked Grant another question. If you saw it, then why didn't you mention it? Because, Grant uh, said, you're always working so hard out there, I figured I didn't need to mention it. Well, Tarkenton said, if you ever want me to block a 300-pound tackle again, you do. <laughs> Don't put off until tomorrow what God wants you to do today. Don't wait to make peace with that person that you've been feuding with for years. Don't wait to do the things that you need to do right now for your sense of well-being. Maybe that means you don't wait to stop smoking or you don't wait to go on that diet. You don't wait to work on your prayer life. You don't wait to follow that dream that you've been putting off for one reason or another. The parable wants you to do it now so that you won't end up like the foolish maidens in the parable who found themselves standing outside that locked door, missing out on that wonderful, grace-filled moment. So the parable doesn't want you to end up with a heart of regret, saying to yourself, if only I had told her how much I love her, if only I had spent more time with the kids, if only I had gone back to school, if only I had taken better care of myself. The parable wants you to do it now so you don't miss out on that grace-filled moment, so you don't miss out on that healing moment of reconciliation, so that you don't miss out on that moment of triumph, so that you'll be ready when the risen Christ comes back. One of my favorite stories is about a woman who made sure that something like that didn't happen to her. Her name was Thelma, and even at 75 years of age, she was full of life. So when her husband died, she decided to move into an assisted living community. In no time at all, she had dozens of new friends and she was involved in all kinds of activities. She became almost a self-appointed activity director and she was always working to make sure that people felt involved, that they felt connected. Everybody loved her, so much so that five years later, they threw a surprise birthday party for her. When Thelma walked into the room, everyone stood and applauded the organizers of the event ushered her to the head table. The evening was full of laughter and entertainment, but through it all, Thelma couldn't stop from staring at a man sitting at the other end of her table. So when the festivities came to an end, she quickly got up and went over to the gentleman to apologize. I'm sorry, she said. I didn't mean to keep staring at you throughout the evening, but I couldn't help myself. You see, you look just like my fifth husband. The gentleman was stunned. Five husbands, he said. I'm Sorry, I apologize, but exactly how many times have you been married? At that point, Thelma looked at him with a smile on her face and said, Four. <laughs> I knew it was going to take you a second to get that one. They were married a few months later. It's always good to be prepared. After all, you never know when Christ is going to come back, and you never know when God's grace is going to come and knock on your door. Amen.